one, one of the things that we do on the show, and we haven't done it in a while, is look at the top 10 comic books rising in value. So if you're a speculator, uh, I guarantee you this is going to be a lot about Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's sort of sort of the thing that's going on. So it's always interesting to look at this list, see what's happening here. Uh, number 10, coming in at number 10 is Secret Wars number 5, Alex Ross. So that's going to be this comic right here. Uh, released in 2015. This is right before I say comics really took a nosedive. Uh, while this book does support the first appearance of Night Machine, uh, the alternate reality of Nikola Tesla, the real draw is the blink and you'll miss it moment of the dead in the Deadpool 3 trailer. So here we go, Deadpool 3 stuff. While all eyes were focused on the shadow Wolverine over Deadpool, off to the side was a dusty cover of the book and for a brief moment, whether it's a story that they're drawing uh, from is up to debate currently, but some don't waste any time and often secure a copy. So speculation here that there might be some related stuff in this book as it pertains to um, Deadpool 3. Uh, coming in at number 9, Deadpool Secret, Secret Wars. Uh, number 1, this is also in 2015. It's a central theme of the Deadpool 3 trailer. It was a call to action for old Wade Wilson to cross the multiversal boundaries and save the MCU. That's essentially a story within this series where Deadpool is transported to an alternate reality to fight a secret war. Um, number 8 is a Batman book here. So yeah. Batman 142, uh, a new Batman book here. <laughs> Uh, the book it marks the beginning of the, the year one storyline for the Joker with hype building that we may receive a definite, definitive, I should say, version of the events that made him who he is. All right, let's stop right here. I am fucking tired, honestly, of hearing about the goddamn Joker, right? Like, for fuck's sakes, man, um, mm -hmm. kill him something right like uh, it, the joker's overdone it's been there's overdone a, for for years there's a lot of new there's a lot of old uh, villains that they could be doing that's for dang, dang sure but it's always the joker you know it's always mm -hmm. like mark Silvestri drew that seven issue batman miniseries it's the first time i bought batman in a while it was it, it looked awesome the problem with it is it's another joker story you know what i mean like Enough with the Joker, man. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to weigh in that. Feel free, but enough with the Joker. Well, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Joker was better dope. as a character. I mean, Joker was a better as a character. We didn't know anything about him. You know, he was just pure walking chaos, and he was just an enemy of Batman. You know, just you know, we we I actually preferred. I didn't know anything about him. You know, but uh, I think that uh, when what. I think it was Alan Moore who actually did thing it created an origin for him in the oh no no. I think it goes back to the Red Hood uh storyline way back in the the Golden Age. They have they have given the Joker about a hundred different fucking origins throughout the <laughs> you know, the years, right? The one I always sort of go with was actually the one I saw in the movie. You know, the original Michael Keaton Batman movie with Jack Nicholson, right? Well, that, like, yeah, that's actually based on the Red Hood story from the, the Golden Age. Right, yeah, you that, know? That one cemented it for me, too. That's how I look at it, but they want to keep trying to explain it. I mean, come on, man. Um, the next one on the list uh, is a Grant Morrison New X-Men here. Uh, at least I think it's Grant Morrison run. Um uh, 144, another blinking you'll miss it moment in the Deadpool 3 trailer. Of course, we get the anonymous framing of a back of the back of a bald head, but it was enough for the fan base to theorize and force some with some equating to the bald head is that of Cassandra Nova. First appearing in this book, she's the twin sister of Charles Xavier. She's uh, an astral plane parasite who copied Xavier's DNA while he was just staying inside his mother's womb. I mean, that's a fucking reach, man, for a first appearance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are, are, are you fucking kidding me, man? Like we're tracking the book at a at a value of a hundred bucks for a CGC copy. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your money. You can do whatever you want with it. And fair enough, man. Uh, number six is uh, this one right here with Iron Man here on the cover. Looks like another Alex Ross cover here. 
Uh, Avengers Twilight, Alex Ross, regular uh, cover. Marvel hit the ground running with this series. We got introduced to new... The fuck? Got introduced to new characters in issue one. And they followed it up by introducing Thunderbolt Troopers and a new bullseye in Ramona Jones. Plus, Alex Ross lent his talents and delivered an incredible cover. Um, there you go. Ultimate Spider-Man number one. All right, here we go. So, I bought into this. Um, after hearing the hype about this book for so long, and it's selling out in comic book shops, I bought Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I got a variant copy of it. It's the only one I could find. I have yet to read it, but I hope to God that uh, it impresses me as much as people say that this book will. This is Jonathan Hickman. I got to tell you, I didn't dig his X-Men stuff. So, like, the guy, you got, like, one last fucking chance with me, bro, right? And, it's, you know, and I know this is a different Spider-Man and a different universe and da-da-da-da-da. But apparently this book was made to appease fans because they were upset that Mary Jane had gone on like a different direction from Peter. And this is Mary Jane and Peter married and blah, 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 right? Um, so I hope, I hope it's good. Has anyone read Ultimate Spider-Man number one? I have. What do you think? I liked it, but it's kind of funny because... Like, I, it had a lot of interesting story, a lot of, like, you know, even though it's a new Spider-Man, my knowledge of Spider-Man really dug me into deeper. And the funny thing is, is that it was it's just world building. There's no one gets punched in the whole book, and I only noticed that until after, I only noticed that after I was done reading it and thinking about it. Mm. So it breaks all the rules that we've been, that people have been talking about that comics should have about like action comics but it still worked well listen so, to this 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 is interesting this book was finally unseated from the top spot yet by another ultimate title which we'll get into uh, it's been hot potato since its debut and still going strong whenever a copy hits the aftermarket it's getting snatched up quickly it's also bucked by a trend of variants dominating the aftermarket so i i bought mine for like five bucks maybe two weeks ago so i'm probably sitting on 100 200 bucks right now uh, establishing the cover A's of the world as the current king. They're tracking it at a high sale of $250 for 9.8. This book just came out like a month or two ago. Wow. That's crazy. 250 bucks. I mean, we can confirm that on eBay, but they're probably right. Uh, number four is Ultimate Universe number one from 2023. So that would be uh, this one right here with Thor on the cover. Uh, let's see what they're saying about that one. Uh, on so last, why, why is it getting such a big, uh, big price point? Are they doing like limited runs of things? Is no, it be, it's because it's sold out so quickly. It's mm -hmm. a new, new take on Spider Man. Uh, he, here's the thing that we've said about comics, and this goes back to the Mark Miller thing, the Glenn O'Leary speech about if you just make the books good, people will come and fucking buy them. Apparently that book is really good and people bought the shit out of it and still looking for it, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just mm -hmm. like the way they say the new Transformers and G.I. Joe stuff from Skybound Entertainment is good and that yeah. shit's selling out. If you can make a good comic book, people will still come and buy comic books. It's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Like, but if you make shit comic books, they're probably not going to come and get them. You know, like, yeah, yeah. And this should be a lesson, Marvel. Like, you should be watching the success of that book and go, you know what? Whatever we're doing here, whatever course correction we made, we need to start applying that everywhere. Well, uh, I will tell you, Marvel has a habit of overdoing things. You know, when they, uh, whenever they find some success in something, they'll just beat the shit out of it until no one cares anymore. You know, and because uh, they think that's what they need to do. So uh, I, I will predict that they'll probably try to do all this ultimate stuff and try to do to replicate the success of it until, you know, uh, people get sick and tired of what they're doing and then they move on. To well, you've already called it because we're going to see it right here. Ultimate Universe number one. On last week's report, we saw the, uh, the uh, fair market value of this book drop due uh, to my comic shop having seven dollar copies well those sold out 
And now we're getting a better look at a more accurate aftermarket number. It's getting another boost in sales. So collectors have identified this book as the first cameo appearance of the Ultimate Black Panther. Again, this is another reach. The current king of the aftermarket. It also sports the debut of Maystorm, a character in the community that has embraced fully. Right now they're tracking at about $40 for a raw copy. Uh, Afterburn number one. Uh, let's see this. This sounds different. Afterburn number one. It's not even a Marvel or DC book at all. So that's an interesting entry. Um, let's see. Red 5 Comics uh, from 2008. Ben, have you ever heard of Red 5 Comics? No, I have not. Okay, well, let's see what they say. It's wild how an optioning hmm. announcement of an IEP can turn an afterthought into an overnight sensation. This book follows a group of treasure hunters who survive a devastating solar flare. Samuel L. Jackson, get them motherfucking plane snakes off my motherfucking plane, and Dave Bautista have recently announced being attached to the project, joining Gerard Butler. Uh, that was enough for fans to buy in as big name actors like Samuel L. Jackson getting signed is a strong indicator that the project will go on from being optioned to becoming a completed project. So, movie speculation here on uh, some old indie comic. So is that kind of what they did with like Spider-Man 2099? Because then they came out with Thor 2099 and Hulk 2099 and all those. Didn't they do like Iron Man 2099? Yeah, there was a whole ton of those sort of 2099 comics, just like there was Ultimate Comics before. Uh, coming in at number two, Ultimate Black Panther number one. Uh, we saw it with Ultimate Spider-Man. We're seeing it uh, with the Ultimate Black Panther as well. People want these books. Then they got them dot by dot by dot. Cover A, C, Q, or Z. People want a copy for their personal collection. Fully embracing the new Ultimate Universe. But folks will gravitate it uh, when it's great boss logic lends their talents to a book as exciting as this. The rendition of Storm is stunning. And if Cover A was sold, it was an easy book for collectors to turn to. Uh, about 50 bucks right now. And then, of course, uh, the king of the mountain here that they're saying is the Ultimate Black Panther cover A. Uh, like Ultimate Spider-Man, Black Panther has been experiencing a ton of hype. Most retailers sold out immediately when the LCS opened up last Wednesday. Yeah, my comic book shop was talking about, like, in regards to the Spider-Man book, that they sold out on day one. And, like, people were calling off and on all day looking for a copy, you know? Uh, Pre-orders dried up nearly overnight. The aftermarket was booming in minutes as collectors wanted the first full appearance of the new Ultimate Black Panther. This book has been experiencing an insane climb. There's also rumors about how tight the market is for this book and why some local comic shops receive less than what they ordered or none at all. Nothing has been substantiated currently, but the rumor is lit for a fire under this book causing some buyers to resort to extreme lengths to secure a copy. They're tracking a high sale of a graded 9.8 for 150, and that's probably just going to go up. Um, ben, the speculator speculator market yes. still uh, alive and real, right? <laughs> well, it's always been around, you know. My uh, my feeling is that that's when you speculate on something that you don't love, then what's the point? You know, it's just like uh, you're just trying to you know, gain some, trying to benefit financially on uh, uh, FOMO and what's uh, what's hyped up right now. Well, well you know, this goes Punk back Star to an argument I had with Tyler Carpenter. Uh, you know, where I was trying to say to him that I think the modern comic book market has become more for collectors than it did has for the average reader. And, oh, by, read and by reading that, right, what I just read about how collectors are – you know, scrambling because it's the first appearance of a new ultimate character and they're already flipping the book leads yeah, me I mean, to believe they that don't... they're not even, you know, no one's reading the book. They're just, you know, it's what a speculate speculator craze. What would be interesting to know is all those books that are being sold are actually being sold to individual people who want to read it. How many of those are actually being sold to those people? And how many of them are being grabbed up five at a time? Yeah. You know, collectors yeah. who just want to flip the book. I remember getting into a fight with Captain Cummings long before, like, a Comics Gate was a thing and he was around in Comics Gate. And Captain Cummings was still a speculator, you know. And I got pissed off. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking tired of going to the comic book shop 
and like trying to get a book and these fucking speculators come in and buy the whole rack. And Catherine Cummings just looks at me and goes, early bird gets the worm. And like, you fucking prick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Special place in hell. You know, it's a special place in hell, man. 